Hi everyone, it's Bina007 back for another 10 minute spoiler free movie review. I'm here today to talk about Still Alice, for which Julianne Moore won the Best Actress Oscar this year. She plays a college professor at Columbia University called Alice Howland, who is a woman who has lived her life um, by her wits, by her intellect. She's a specialist in how children learn to speak. And she is also married to an incredibly successful medical professor and they have lived a life of ambition and success. They have three grown-up children, uh, a son and a daughter who are a lawyer and a doctor respectively, and the youngest daughter who is trying to be an actress controversially. This causes much angst in the mind of Alice who believes everyone should have a solid college education and a fallback plan. So as the movie opens, we quickly establish that Alice is in control, she's slick, she is one of life's winners. And then suddenly she gets this diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's disease. So the first half hour of this film is really her getting the diagnosis, internalising what it means for her, and really what it means for her family, because this is a genetic condition. The second half hour of this film really sees the deterioration, which is very quick. Apparently that's normal with highly intellectual people and internalizes us to a certain extent. And this will be one of my criticisms of the film into Alice's experience of her condition. Really, actually, it's far more, I think, about seeing how other people react to her, how her husband is loving, continues to be loving, but somehow keeps busy and wants to put his career at the forefront. He obviously feels some guilt about this, but it's his way of coping. And who are we to judge? The third half hour of the movie really plays as a kind of end note in which, and I don't mean literally, but in which we really see Alice not herself. And in that sense, the title of the film is ironic because she seems almost like a zombie. She just is in her own headspace, her youngest daughter, with whom she had the most contentious relationship, very movingly as the one who wants to become her primary carer. And that is really um, moving and affecting. But we're almost distanced from Alice's experience of her illness, just as she is distanced from herself. And I think maybe that's appropriate, and maybe that's what this film is trying to show us, how the pain of this particular disease is how it alienates you from yourself and therefore from the people that you love. I think Julianne Moore's performance has rightly been praised. It is affecting. There is a key moment in this film where she delivers a speech about what it's like to live with her disease and it is affecting. I I did cry actually and Maybe that's just about me and my own personal fear as someone who hopefully lives by her intellect. I mean, I've always been quite slightly paranoid about Alzheimer's. Um, but is it an Oscar-winning performance? I don't know what an Oscar-winning performance is. Normally there are these very big performances, roles like Aaron Brockovich, or they are roles that deal in illness. And, you know, I think Eddie Redmayne winning for his depiction of multiple sclerosis shows how much the Academy likes these very sort of technically accomplished illness roles, for better or worse, and arguably you could see that as rather condescending to people who are actually ill. I think Julianne Moore has done excellent work throughout her career, ever since Safe, really, but, you know, movies like Far From Heaven, um, The End of the Affair, even small comic roles like those in The Big Lebowski, um, she really is a superb actress. She elevates what could be a rather cliched role of, you know, the porn star with a heart of gold in Boogie Nights. And to me, this Academy Award is just a recognition, a belated recognition of her quality as an actress. I don't think this is the role for which she will be remembered, other than as it's the one for which she won the Oscars. And to me, it's a little bit like Martin Scorsese finally winning an Oscar for The Departed, which we all know is by far not his best work. It's not even in the top five of the best Scorsese films. In fact, the actress who impressed me most in Still Alice wasn't Julianne Moore, but Kristen Stewart, who we all know from the Twilight trilogy. But she is so wonderful 
as Alice's daughter Lydia, who is fighting at the start of the movie to retain her independence and one can only imagine what it must have been life like for her growing up in a household full of these high performing lawyers and medics and yet she wants to forge her path as a as a as an actress. And the relationship she forges with Alice towards the end of the film I think says far more about her character's innate empathy and insightfulness than her mother, than Alice herself. And there's a wonderful scene earlier on where, um, this is some time after the diagnosis, where she asks her, but mum, what, what does it feel like? And at the end of this long description, which is heartbreaking, Alice says, thank you for asking, because it's as though no one has actually stopped to ask what it's like for her yet. So if anything, I would say, watch this film if you watch it at all for Kristen Stewart. And I look forward to seeing what she does with her career now that she's through the barrier of those awful Twilight films. Is this a well-made film, other than its acting performances? I'm not entirely sure. I had high hopes, actually. When the film starts out, and as Alice starts to realise she's losing her memory, the film does some very interesting things with sound and visuals. So the cinematographer, Dennis Lenoir, who I think this is kind of his first major movie, um, does some interesting things where she loses focus. So she's in focus to us, but what she's seeing loses focus as if to give you that sense of disorientation, which I think is quite clever. Um, but what I really loved actually is the soundtrack by a composer called Ilan Eshkeri, who also did the soundtracks for um, Kick-Ass and Stardust. So Michael Vaughan, Matthew Vaughan movies. Um, and it's wonderful because it's, it's a beautiful orchestral soundtrack, fine. But when you have the moments where she's really disoriented, it almost goes into sort of when you hear orchestras tuning up, but it's discordant. And you can just feel the musicians trying to find their way back to the harmony and trying to find their way back to um, where they need to be in the piece. And that's such a lovely oral echo of what Alice is experiencing. I thought that was really clever. But ultimately, I don't think this is a particularly well-written or indeed well-made movie. It's been directed and written by uh, Wash Westmoreland and Richard Glatzer, who the only movies I remember them for are, I think they made uh, The Fluffer, which is quite a funny little movie um, with rather salacious subject matter, which is probably why it became famous. And also... And that's pretty much it, I think. They always work together, it seems. And I think the way to look at the film itself is it's rather mechanical. You know, like I said, it's just a very linear telling. Apart from a few early signs of doing something interesting visually and orally, it's pretty much tab A into slot B. And the real criticism I'd make of this movie is it kind of feels like it's pulling its punches. Um, they allow Julianne Moore's character, Alice, to suffer but never enough or never to become unpleasant or spiky. So if I make a contrast, I would point you to an amazing film by a director called Sarah Polly called Away From Her, which came out back in 2006. And it was based on a short story by Alice Munro called The Bear Came Over the Mountain. And it starred Judy Christie as a woman who was coping with Alzheimer's um, and it showed her being really truly cruel in her disease but not deliberately cruel but the casual callousness of a woman who doesn't recognize her husband and finds him irritating like who is this person pestering me so I think that we see Alice vulnerable we never see cruelty we never see casual indifference and we never see the pain and frustration of disease. And that's kind of, I guess, my criticism of a lot of these films, even the theory of everything, that everyone is just so wonderfully quiet and patient in their suffering. They're real martyrs. And I don't think that's how real people endure serious illness, which isn't to say that they aren't sometimes patient and calm, but surely they have bad, frustrating, angry days. And I just feel I needed that. I needed to see something a little bit more spiky and to that extent, I would say Away From Her is the far, far better film. And actually, if I'm honest, and it's a while since I've seen it, Julie Christie's depiction 
of her illness was more affecting than Julianne Moore's, although one shouldn't put these things in competition with each other. The other criticism I'd make of this film is it just seems to end. It just seems to sort of stop <laughs> mid-scene almost. Um, it just feels like the writers could have done with another pass at the script. Um, which doesn't mean that I need some dramatic climax of the sort that the film almost hints at at one point. But I do need some kind of closure. And that the film chose to rest on Kristen Stewart's character and and her relationship with her mother, I think, maybe hints at kind of an unevenness, potentially, in the characterizations in this film. So overall, is this film worth watching? I think it is, because, you know, as we all get older and, and deal with things like Alzheimer's, it's it's relevant, right? There's not enough stuff being made about these issues. And it's a brave topic to, to tackle, I think. And Julianne Moore is wonderful, because she's always wonderful, right? And Kristen Stewart is really interesting in this film. And there, it's just, it's well made enough to carry you through it. Is it an exceptional film? No, but it's certainly, I think, worth your time. But if you've seen Still Alice and disagree with me, and as I, a lot of my friends who are critics seem to really hate this film, uh, please feel free to leave a comment on the blog, or you can find me on Twitter at Bina007. Otherwise, thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.